Hey, 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 Leslie here, and I'm back in the Black Room studio with my dope engineer, Sam. So, this segment is about the role of an engineer, what part you play in the mixing process, and terms that everybody should be familiar with. All right, so let's just get right into this then. What? Well, first, why don't you introduce? Look in the camera. Hey, yeah. Introduce yourself to the people. Who are you? What is your name? What do you do? And where do you do it at? Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Samuel Innocent. I'm a mixing engineer based out of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we're here in my studio, Black Room. All right, straight to the point. I like it. That's it. It's very <laughs> succinct. All right, so you are a mixing engineer. What is the job of an engineer? Well, the mixing engineer has uh, multiple jobs, um, but the main job is just to capture the vibe of the artist, um, make sure that the artist is relaxed and comfortable um, doing what she or he needs to do to get the song, to get the actual recording um, sound correct and... Um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, yeah. So if I was a recording artist um, and I come into the studio um, and it's all jacked up, like, are you responsible for fixing it? No. Um, if it's all jacked up, um, you know, I could try to help to make it sound better. But, you know, if, it, if, if we do multiple takes and it's not coming out the way it needs to come out, then... Um, let's try another song. Or another day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So you said we could do another take. So now all of the songs that an engineer mixes, they don't necessarily record it themselves, correct? No. No. Okay. Um, are there differences between mixing sessions you record versus a session that an artist might record separately and then send the file to you? Yeah, sometimes the artists uh, can record the session at home, and um, there is a different sound quality to it sometimes. Um, if, they, if they don't have a actual professional setup or have professional gear uh, inside their homes or inside their home recording studio, it does sound different versus a commercial or really, you know, decent-sized studio, um, you know. Um, one thing about mixing engineers is that uh, we like to organize um, all our tracks. Some um, recording artists that records at home, their tracks doesn't, you know, everything's all over the place. Um, you know, it doesn't. Look what do you right mean somewhere. by everything is all over the place? Um, the 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 naming of the tracks is different. Um, the 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 volume of the tracks are different. Um. So let's say uh, I'm MC such and such, <laughs> and you, I just spit hot MCs. fire. <laughs> you MCs, Dylan, 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 Dylan. Yeah, yeah, hot to fire, hot fire, <laughs> hot fire. And I s email you, or we transfer you yeah. my my files, and I'm like, yeah. And then you click on it, and your face goes. Mm -hmm. What do you see? What did I do wrong? Um, probably you're off pitch, you're off key, or uh, <laughs> um, the audio is clipping. That's another thing, or the audio is not loud enough. Um, okay, the, what is clipping? Audio clipping. The audio clipping is pretty much this distortion. Um, the level's too high. Um, if the level's too high on the actual um. Uh, recording it's kind of hard for the engineer to get a good decent sound unless that's the effect you know what i'm saying if it's a, if it's an effect then that's one thing um but if you want a clean nice sound and it's you know distorted there's i can't save that you know we just gotta work around that and by and by distorted you mean like kind of if something is too loud and kind of like reverberates back or, or like yeah, sounds fuzzy. It sounds it got that fuzzy um 
Sound good. Sound good. Yeah, that's nice. All right. So then you would say, um, well, would you say that artists need to understand some level of the software that engineers use? Yes, there's different um, DAWs, um, digital audio workstations that you can purchase. What um, is a digital audio workstation, digital. also known as DAW? <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty much a software where uh, engineers use or whoever use to record audio. Okay? Like? Like Vocals? <laughs> like Pro Tools? Like Pro Tools, Cubase, um, Fruity Loops, um, Studio One. Um, and my favorite, Adobe Audition. Adobe mm -hmm. Audition. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. Doesn't matter. Garage Band for, for some of you Mac users. Mm -hmm. Um which is pretty good, actually. And is GarageBand, because mm -hmm. I thought that was like a game. Is that a, a, oh, a, a doll that's... <laughs> GarageBand, isn't it? Oh, that's Guitar Band. Is it Guitar Band? Just stop, just stop while you're ahead. It's guitar Band. Just stop while you're ahead. GarageBand. It sounds like a video game. So is that <laughs> something that would suffice uh, for a person that wants to record sound and want to make sure that they're able... I mean, like, does yeah. it support multi-track sessions? It does. It does okay. support multi-track sessions. And, um, yeah, you could do... Um, yeah, you can record anything. Like most most stars, you could do. They're all the same to me. Um, it's just a, you know different layout and different um features, but um, they all can record. They all can edit, and you know you can um export to an MP3 file, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so then s since we brought up DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, and what that is, mm -hmm. um. I guess there are there's a couple of different terminology that an artist should familiarize themselves with so that you can have a better session, correct? Yes, if you know the language of the engineer, everything will be good. You know, run um, smoother. It runs smoother. Um, less takes. Less takes because you because you because we speak the same language, you could tell me exactly what you're looking for. All right, so I have some vocabulary words. Ah oh, shit. Uh, that you're gonna explain. <laughs> you're gonna explain in in layman's terms, so that way for all of our artists, that, that doesn't mean that you have to know how to record sound or mm -hmm. become an engineer. Right. But that as an artist going into the studio, you should be um, comfortable using these terms so that you can communicate what you need. Correct. All right. Levels. Levels. Um, volume. Right. Uh, what is that? Volume, levels, volume, loudness. Right. So, so if you want to let your levels up, I'll just crank up the volume a little bit so that you, you know. But it's levels with an S, so that means multiple volumes. Multiple volumes. So, about? so, so if it's with an S, that means, um, yeah, it's multiple, multiple tracks, multiple, multi tracks. Right. If it's with mm -hmm. an S, more levels. <laughs> okay so if i am recording in the booth mm -hmm. it will, yeah, but you want yeah so turn my headphones up. that's not the levels that we're talking about or is that uh because it's still the first of all right know, so so yeah but, yeah but that's that's the volume right that's that, that's the volume so you say turn my levels up okay what you want me to turn up your vocals okay turn the beat up okay the drums okay turn what up you know? So then you would say turn the drum level up. Turn right, high, you're right. You you tell me, yeah. So up. if you turn the levels up, let the engineer. What levels are you talking about? If it's your vocals, all right. Usually when you say turn the levels up, I'm gonna go for the vocals, um, because that you know it's a point for you to hear yourself. So that's the first thing we reach. But you know. Okay. Uh, what is EQ? EQ equalizer. Um, equalizer. There's a few meanings for it, but um, there's parametric EQs, and that's pretty much what I use EQs for. Is just a um sculpt the sound right or to take away things that's in the track that i do not like to hear um most equalizers have 10 bands 12 bands 20 bands 6 bands 2 bands 30 bands 30 bands you know what i'm saying mine has 30 up to 30 yeah it might even go more than that actually okay well you fancy <laughs> okay sorry please continue. <laughs> please continue yeah so so pretty much you can adjust the levels within the frequency you know. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so there's le there goes levels again. Levels so again. then all sound has multiple frequencies that you can adjust. Just, and the more bands, those are the more opportunities 
for the more adjustments right. in that particular sound, in that recording, right? Correct. So if it's 10 band, that means the little sliders that you see um, on the screen mm-hmm. right there. Mm-hmm. Right there. Right, right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> right? So if it's 10, there's 10. Right. If there's 10, there's 10 sliders. Mm-hmm. And then there's yeah. 10 opportunities for me to adjust within yeah. that sound, right? Correct. And then so on and so forth. Correct. And what you're listening for is just the different complexities that it, the voice has. It, the, the, uh, how deep goes here? And do you want to pull up out here? Do that again. And you hear a little. <laughs> what was all that? All that kind of stuff. What was that? I that? I'm not doing that. Again, okay. So. <laughs> right. Okay. That is correct. Okay. So, what is dubbing? Dubbing uh, is a short term for doubles. That's it. You double in the track. That's it. Right. So. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. If I'm looking at the video and it's going and it's moving along, but then I put another audio track on top of that, that's dubbing, right? That's one way of dubbing. Um, usually in, in when you mix when you're recording um um actual music, hip hop, R and B, whatever it is, they use dubbing they'll duplicate the word, right? So for instance, if it says um Mary had a little lamb on another track they will repeat the word that they want to emphasize. Right. And played in that right. same so spot. Mary has a little lamb, right? They mm-hmm. will, you know, pretty much uh, duplicate that word so it can give us a little more emphasis, right? Got it. Yeah. All right. Ad libs. I think ad-libs. all artists know we what ad libs are, but <laughs> doop, doop, doop. for anybody who's <laughs> watching. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You, oh, you yeah, guys, y'all love them gunshot ad yeah. libs. Yeah. Bow. Do, 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 bow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they already know what that is. Let's, let's, All right. Let's, let's, what, what is flying the hook? Flying the hook is pretty much you copying the hook from one section to another. Okay, so that way you can have consistency throughout the whole song. Yeah, so except for, repeating, except for recording the hook again, yeah, I could just take that good hook that you recorded and I just put it after the second verse or after the third verse or the bridge or whatever it is. So okay, everything's quick. Mm-hmm. So those would be, so we have EQ, so we have DAW, mm-hmm. Digital Audio Workspace. Mm-hmm. We have um, Levels, mm-hmm. EQ, which mm-hmm. is short for Equalizer, mm-hmm. Dubbing, Ad-Libs, and Flying the Hook. Mm-hmm. Those are the essential vocabulary terms yeah. that you should familiarize yourself with yeah, but feel- before you go to yeah, the and, and, studio. And, and, I mean, they're, they're, of course, there's more, um, but... We can it, get into that yeah, in the next, next episode. Next t- yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for tuning in to My Dope Engineer and learning a little bit about what is the role of an engineer, what part you play, and make sure you check back for part two.